When this morning's guest started in television, it was in black and white. Now he's back in black and white as the Myrtle Beach Herald's newest columnist. Who is he? You'll meet him coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at East of Chicago Pizza at 40th Avenue North and Kings Highway here in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on a new broadcasting column that's kicked off in the Myrtle Beach Herald, our show sponsor. And we're visiting with the columnist, Pete Sealer. Good morning, Good Pete. Good morning to you, Greg. How are you? Thank you so much for coming in early Thank on you. a Monday morning here well, to kick off the week. It's an exciting week. And what about this East of Chicago pizza? It's unbelievable. The place is amazing. amazing. We're going to have to stay around for lunch and get a uh, buffet later this uh, morning. Well, I'd love that. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, of course, it's so exciting to think about you kicking off a column. How was the 4th, by the way? Did you have uh, a big 4th of July? 4th was great. Uh, it was down in uh, Myrtle Beach, Murrell's Inlet. Yeah. Watched the parade. And had uh, a typical Fourth of July with Greg Everett and the family down. Oh there. yeah, just fantastic. Big crew down there, and you brought Hilda Carter down. Hilda Carter was there, and a lot of people were there. A good turnout it was a lot of fun. I saw you sitting around one of the tables there with John Stamey, Doctor John, right. our internet columnist, with Hilda Carter, the around town columnist, and there's Pete Sealer, the newest columnist. As a matter of fact, that that was the day before your column actually came out last right. Thursday. That was correct. Here in the Herald. And of course, the very exciting thing was on the front page. You were right down there in the bottom of the front page, which was very cool. And of course, you're in our entertainment section, along with Chris Huff's Places to Be. And he also does a Movies to See, a weekly column, to a weekly a movie review. So to now have your piece, which is focused on what all is it focused well, on? Well, television is such an in takes in so many avenues now than it never did before. Oh, yeah. You can go back to when I started out, and television in most communities were only one channel, two channels. There were no cable systems. Now you have television on your PC recorder at home. You now oh, yeah. can get television programs on your cell phone. You, right. can get, you get television is all over the place now. Where, where, where do you go where there's no television no more? Nowhere. Right. Right. You walk into restaurants, you see television monitors. Yeah. You walk into stores, you see television monitors. Television is all over, and the programming has taken many different aspects. You're right. There is more channels. You got a 500 channel satellite and cable system now. It's, amazing. It's growing. Yeah, it is amazing. Have you got one of those iPhones yet, uh, nope, Pete? Not yet. I, Are you going to splurge? You think? I, I'll wait a while. See. Uh, you wait know, for the prices to come down. Price. You know, it's roughly about the first year about seven eight hundred dollars. I know. That's pretty yeah. Expensive. That is. That is. Apple computers. Apple. That's Steve Jobs, and the group have really gone out on a loan. Do you think and, it'll be a success? Oh, I, from what I read and see, everybody's buying. The lines are out. They're, yeah. you know, and they're limiting the number that you can buy, and it, it's just phenomenal. It is amazing. I'm going to hold this up real quick so folks, if they go to uh, area boxes to pick up a Herald, they'll see this inaugural column from Montana to Myrtle Beach. Obviously, that I, that won't be the title every week. It's going to change every week, but the name of the column, you all went with On Air, and that covers not only TV, Will you will you also be doing a little focus on radio or focus on cable? On radio, or and it's going to internet. Focus, internet, it's going to you know, DVD even is a form of right point. Yes, it's a, it's everything That's that you got through that box at home. Whether you have a high definition set or the analog, you know, and being seriously, analog will not exist after 2009, the February date. Is that right? Is it really going to drop? Uh, Fox 43 will no longer be Fox 43. 43 it'll be, I believe, Fox 18. Fox 18, and you got all these others. It's, it's a revolution of the of gigantic proportions because many of the rural people that have antennas at home with their regular analog, analog sets will have to get a box right. and a digital antenna outside to pick right. up the digital sets. Absolutely. It sounds like we're having a little funny air here right I, at East of Chicago Pizza with these I, sounds here in the background. I don't know if you can hear all that, Pete. A lot going on here at East of Chicago early early to kick off the week. Go ahead. I'm sorry. There's so I think television is really, you know, everything from, let's say, DVD to even programming to, you know, your informational. Television is now 
whether it's in an iPod or whether it's in the e-phone or anything, it's an informational age that exceeds everything that you've ever dreamed of. How long have you, did you just get in TV recently, Pete? Uh, when you mean recently, are you talking within the last hundred years? Let's within say, the last hundred years, okay. that I am, absolutely. Well, let's say it was fifty and a half years. Oh, come on. Fifty. Not fifteen? No. Five oh? Five oh. You are kidding. You got into television fifty years ago. December 1st, 1956. You remember it vividly? I remember it vividly. Do you really? First day of the, uh, it was a closed circuit television system, which was a, basically a television station that operated like a cable system. It was different than a cable system is today. It originated its own programming. In other words, it had a studio, live cameras. Instead of broadcasting over the air, they broadcast on the cable to people that picked it up. There was no, the only channel, they finally did add a second channel, but it was the only channel on the system. And that was before, uh, let's say, the outside towns came in with translators and that. But this was the way they got television. Right. And I saw the tests, what they were doing, and I was enthralled by seeing the images on the screen. I wanted to be involved. It was show business. Yeah. Where was this, Be Miles City, Montana. Miles City, Montana. That's why the first one from Montana yeah. to Myrtle Beach. Right. Amazing. Small town, about yeah. 10,000 people located on the Yellowstone River, uh, has a real wild reputation. Really? For but what? It's a cow town. It's a cowboy town. Each year in the third week in May, they have one event that brings in 25, 30,000 people. It's the Bucking Horse Sale. Really? And uh, it's the most phenomenal event that you could ever go to. It's, uh, it's a rodeo. It's where they try bucking horses out for the rodeo companies to buy to use in their show. Right, sure. So, so that's what they call the bucking horse. And it's been there like umpteen years, like even before I was born. And it's a big event. Everybody you still goes. have family out there, Pete? I have family that lives in the in area. In Miles City? Miles City, Billings, Baker, Plevna, and that whole area. Plevna. These are places that, uh, what's the population? You have a ballpark idea of what the population is, let's say, even of the state of Montana. Montana is idea? around 865,000, I Is believe. that right? right? So one of the less populated less states populated. in the country. But right. uh, a lot going on within that one right. state. The county is, uh, the city is about 10,000 people. The county is about 12,000. Okay. And the county is 40 miles wide and about 50 miles long. No way. So that's Custer County. Amazing. Uh, and it's interesting. That's where I got started in television. Television yeah. came in as a wired uh, system. I got involved. I went down there and I said, I want to be involved. I want to get in it. So they started me as what they call handle the film, as a film director. I had to film. All the programming would come in by film. Mm -hmm. And it was bicycled from one of the systems to another system. In other words, Is that right? the first system that got it was Cedar City, Utah. They had a system there. Then it came to Needles, California. The Needles, California, it came to Miles City, Montana. Mm -hmm. Miles City, Montana then sent it to Ketchikan, Alaska, where they had a system. Then no. Ketchikan sent it to Nome. So, to where? Nome, Alaska. That's, uh, that's it was a couple. That's another part of the world. It right. seems like almost, yeah. And when we were in television there, we used to celebrate television Christmas programs. We'd get the kinescopes or the film programs right. in March. No. So all the Christmas programs that were on the network on the live basis or seat of the big cities were in December that week. They would come finally us the third or fourth week in March. So, you are kidding, Pete. So that was, everybody would see the Ozzy and Harriet's when they're talking about the Christmas programs right. the last week in March. It was, you know, everybody accepted it. Yeah. And that was the time that I thought television, I, I never knew the impact of television as being so strong as when I got involved in. Because that was when the hula hoop craze was going on. Right. Uh, I remember, uh, maybe some of your older readers in the paper will remember, the old Ozzy and Harriet show. Oh, yeah? And they had a program on, and I can remember that distinctively to this day, where I saw the power of advertising and what was in television. At the time. Yeah. They were talking about Tutti Frutti ice cream. The episode was about Tutti Frutti. And right after the... When the program was on, the general manager of the station, Dave Ravines, called the local ice cream shop and asked them if they carried Tutti Frutti ice cream. 
and he said, I can make an announcement if you got it on the air right after the program. So after the show ended at 8 o'clock, he went on the air and he said, there is Tutti Frutti ice cream in Miles City. It's at the Penguin Shop. He went down to the Penguin Shop an hour later, and there were 400 and some people trying to get into the Penguin Shop. Oh, come on. It was you were unbelievable. kidding. In a no. town like that, that's 5% of the population? 5% they were down there because everybody had seen it. They wanted, I saw the power of what advertising can do to get people there. So that really wa dazzled me yeah, yeah. to say, you know, that has a big impact. Oh, yeah. Everybody talks about what they see on television. And what I want to do with the column is let the people know what's out there in the world of television, whether it's on cable, whether it's on the broadcast stations, right. whether it's on the Internet, and what's coming out on DVDs with some of the programming out there. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an informative type column. And you've got a familiarity with all the networks, Pete. Of course, the excitement. I'm sure a lot of folks are wondering, can you be objective? Because obviously now, since you work with the local Fox affiliate, uh, can you still cover every one of objectively yes you know and you know when you work in all of the affiliates I worked with uh, NBC ABC CBS affiliates all of them I've worked with and spent right. time right and I always look in the Fox affiliates sure. uh, the CW they all have programming they all have good program right and everybody in this day and age is going for appointment television oh, they yeah. make an appointment to watch a certain program and that's what I want to do is give the people that ability. You know, my insight is say, what's new out there that they don't need? You know, the TV guide has made some, a lot of changes in their magazine. It used to be a simple, clean little magazine booklet. It's now a large magazine type format. Right, right. So it has a lot of changes. And my, just my column is to let people know what's out there. It's happening in the field of television, whether it's digital, analog, sure. what's on the internet, programming is starting to be on the internet oh yeah uh, a lot of programs. programming uh, you know, like carolina people obviously right. you're carolina airing people. today on monday next monday people will be able to watch you at carolina people right. so it's on the network right on the cable on the pc and it's even on people can get the programs that they miss the night before on their phone on their ipod yes. sure or their iphone, their iPhone. That's right so it's changing and I, I just want to be able to give a fair and balanced view of what's happening. You know, it might be even something which is happening with the SEC in Washington that might have a bearing on what the local Absolutely. people yes. want to do. Yes. And Absolutely. I think it's going to change more, and it's always going to be an ever-changing business. But I want to give the people, the readers, a chance to know what's going out there in a small capsule form. Absolutely. That's tremendous, people. Of course, with 50-plus years, what are some of the biggest changes, you know, Surely you're talking about a community in Montana not getting a Christmas Day parade or a Christmas episode of Ozzy and Harriet until the last week of March. So clearly some big changes have happened. Oh, what are some other big changes that have the taken place? The advent of color television. Color television. What year did that happen? Well, NBC was uh, doing color television in the 50s, and in fact, CBS did a version of color television. There were two competing systems for color television. CBS had a mechanical version, and NBC or RCA developed the electronic version. And the only difference on the reason that they didn't quite go as well, didn't go with the CBS system, even though the CBS system was a little bit superior in quality, it was not compatible. In other right. words, the TV sets, you'd have to have a different TV set to yeah. watch the black and white. You could not watch the color program. Is that right? And that's why the FCC gave the RCA system the compatible. You could broadcast it in color and you could watch it on a black and white set. Right, right. I think the advent of color in the middle 60s was the big change because only two companies made color TV sets up until the middle 60s. It was that RCA? RCA, and, and I think Zenith did, then Zenith. finally it opened up, and then the only network that had color programming on a regular basis was NBC till about 1965. Is that right? CBS only carried specials in color and the Red Scout show. That was the whole, <laughs> that was that's that was their whole color schedule. Yeah. ABC never carried any color, and then in 1965 they made the change that they made that all the networks are going to be broadcasting their prime time schedule right. in color. Right, right. And that was what really spurred color. Everybody went out, but and then at the same time there were more sets making color sets. Sure. The price of color 
in the 50s, a color TV set in, in the 1950s was $1,000 in their dollars at that time. No. Wow. What, I wonder what that, yeah, how would that translates into now? Probably three or $4,000. Three or 4000 yeah. yeah. Right. And you're, you're seeing the same thing being played out today with digital television sets. Right, right. Four years ago, what was the price of a digital set? Oh, yeah. It's Over a thousand, fifteen hundred, two yeah. thousand dollars. What are they now? Seven hundred dollars. Walmart has got some down to five hundred dollars. So it's the supply and demand. Right. And this is a big change for us now. It's, there's also going to be a change in radio in the future. Really? How's Digital that? Digital radio. Digital radio. Yes. Right. That's going to come. That's going to be a big thing for the future. What's going to happen with these radio stations? How many are going to go switch to digital radio? Digital radio on AM side will be just unbelievable. That's very interesting. It'll help equalize uh, AM and FM. Right. So there's it's a on a air encompasses everything, takes everything into account, and it's going to be a big change for everybody. That's incredible, Pete. You know, there's so many changes. And, of course, obviously working for Fox now, you've been associated with the Fox affiliate uh, network family since, I believe, 1994. That's your right. favorite shows are probably on Fox right now. But let's say for your favorite shows off of Fox, what, what, what kind of TV do you like to watch, Pete? Uh, I like shows on all the networks. I, Fox, because I work in it, I do like 24. That is my 24? favorite. 24? Is that 24. your favorite show across the board? Oh, come on. Favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite show. Wow. I watch that. Uh, I like the CSI on CBS. Uh, Grey's Anatomy on ABC, which is a top-rated show. I like that. Then I like, uh, I, you know, I switch and I watch the cable channel shows. T uh, Nip and Tuck. Nip and, and Tuck. Tuck. What's that That's about? A show on FX channel. On FX. Right. Yeah. And it's a little bit, uh, let's say, a little bit far out. The other show that I thought was one of the best shows on television was Six Feet Under on HBO. I don't know about that. That was on for about five years. I think Donald years. likes that show, yeah. yeah so that the was thing cool, about the morgue and all. Yeah, the morgue. Yeah, that, yeah. Had, that was different. How could you make a show that was interesting about a family that owns a funeral home? Yeah. Each yeah. week you sat there and it was, was revolved. It? It Did was, you watch The Sopranos much, Pete? Yes, I watched it. It was really? good, uh, you know, but I'm not the... Uh, I mean, big I'm not buff. that big on the mafia type thing. Right, you know, right. So I not too many mafia in Montana. They did have a mafia. In Montana. Are you sure? They the might mafia. have. Yeah, they were cowboys. Yeah. yeah, cowboys, yeah. but not the mafia. Of course, you have been uh, share with viewers what that was like. The advent, having worked uh, with the big three networks for 35 years, and then here comes Fox. What was that like for you, Pete? Uh, uh, if you go back to when Fox even started, it was started back, I think it was 84, 85. And when they, that was a big change because that was a fourth network. There was no idea for close to 40, 50 years when right. broadcast there was a fourth network. Right. Fox went on the air and went on the air. The first year it was on the air, it only had programming on two nights, Saturday and Sunday night. Right. So. A lot of independents went to it, and everybody wondered how would Fox do. Right. And Fox, I would have to say, in the beginning had some tough years. They, you know, they had Married with Children. They started. They had Twenty One Jump Street. Right. And well, they had one some of the show shows Johnny Depp got his start. That was right? Twenty One Jump. Is that right? Street. Yeah. And so it was starting. Then next year they added a night, and finally by the big event for Fox mm -hmm. and. As you well know, your dad advantage, took the advantage of that was sure. in 94 when Fox took NFL away from CBS. That's right. That's when the game big, really big changed. Bucks. That exactly was the big right. bucks. Fox then had the credibility of being a full-fledged network. Just yeah. by that one purchase of tying up NFL football, sure. that made them the network to build. And they paid about $400 million a year for a four-year period originally. Right, yeah, it was like $1.6 like, billion. Yeah, it was really a, changed the landscape. It changed it that landscape. Difficult you know. for CBS to keep it. Right, and it was such interesting because... Uh, your dad and I went to the CBS affiliates meeting after they had announced that they were completely caught off guard when Fox took that oh, yeah, NFL. Yeah, it yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah. They, you know, uh, Mr. Stringer was in charge of the network. They thought that they had it in the bag. They yeah. were all there. And whammo, bingo. And then, not 
within a month and a half, 12 affiliates that were CBS affiliates right. abandoned the yeah, major markets. And major Dallas markets. and other big markets, Phoenix. Atlanta, Phoenix, where they're right. Cleveland, where the they were. New really, World Stations. Sure. And, and, all, and the judge was in, it was his three CBS affiliates. It switched to Fox, and that right. was the biggest story. Fox was now a major player. And two of those were CBS affiliates that you were running. When right. you say the judge, my father and his mother's estate, or my father and grandmother had owned those stations in Southern California, right. which you were the vice president and general manager of. Right, and we made that change. It, oh, yeah. And it was a phenomenal change for us. It changed the, our picture. You know, we had some concerns being a CBS affiliate there for all those years. Right. How would it the public take the change. Right. There was, in fact, when we made the change, we had much better numbers. Oh, yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It, it just jumped up. We El were, Centro and Yuma and Palm right. Springs. Right. We were, we became, the Fox had the number one club. We became the member of the Fox number one club that first year. Out of the gate. Right wow. out of the gate. Wow. In that 18 to 49. So that was a great move. So that, you know, Fox is a real strong network. It's it's willing to take chances. It's edgy. And I would say all the three networks have some. Oh, know. yeah. They've, oh, they've yeah. all get a niche. And, they've you know, all morphed into being much more edgy. Much edgy more and much more, uh, you know, sure. they all reach a niche, what they want to get You into. mentioned 18 to 49. That's something hopefully you'll get into in your on-air column. Right. Talking about demographics and the importance of that for TV that, and even radio stations. That demos is what all the advertisers buy on. What a demo is the important to theirs getting customers in if you, you know you if you're having a toy store or a youth store you want to reach the 12 to 34 well, you, you know your soft drink companies go to the 12 to 34 east Avenue. of chicago east pizza of chicago. sure and you know your main stores like your sears or even some of them tend to skew 25 54. that's that a right yeah. that's a different mm -hmm. age group all the way mm -hmm. so People have become target marketing now, not only in newspapers, radio, television. That's why you got these different formats and radio stations. That's a very good point. A lot of folks don't want to listen to country. But they got and Surely they, they other wanna, folks don't want to listen to classic right. rock. Yeah. yeah. They've all reached the point that that's, you know, you go back to the 40, 30s and 40s in radio. 30s and 40s in radio, they did not have, per se, different formats. Really? They were NBC, ABC, and mutual broadcasting networks. They, right. You know, they broadcast from radio soap operas. Like is television that right? is, yes. Yeah. They, they had soap operas. They had the Red Skelton show. But they did, where they were an all rock station? No. Yeah. That came about during the 50s when television was taking right. the audience away from radio. They just developed a niche that they went into formats. Was there a show that first year in 1956 when you were a teenager, Pete, that drew you to that uh, local access station, that drew you to that TV station to say, I've got to be there, I want to be a star? Was there some show? Show that you were watching, even delayed, that really got you excited and made you think, I want to be a part of that. 1957, Steve Allen show. I saw Elvis on TV for the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you saw Elvis on the Steve Allen yes, show? Yes. Wow. Elvis was on the Steve Allen show. I thought that, I, you know, I was a teeny, young teenager at that time. We, you know, went to the movies to see Love Me Tender with Elvis, the line with Stretcher on the Block, but he wasn't on television. The big markets got him, but right. when he came on, I watched it. I couldn't believe it. it you know, I thought, boy, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Elvis on television. Yeah, yeah. Something Do you have any memories of uh, things that really stand out over the course of 50 years, days that you'll never forget, much like people now think of 9-11 and watching the scenes uh, of the aftermath? The Kennedy assassination is that right? be mine. I, that is where we saw television news, per se, really come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. The coverage uh, was un unbelievable, spectacular, like door to door. Right. That's when television news came into being. If you saw television news in the 50s or 60s, it was very, very plain. Right. It was just a desk, a map usually of the United States behind you, two flags, 
and the guy just read the news, cut it off of AP and read. Maybe they'd slip a slide in. Some bigger stations had 16 millimeter where they had their own developing. But when cameras came in with, you know, you saw the Jack Ruby, the shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald, that was on television. Right. That was the first time that news really came in it. The coverage of the president's funeral was like from the minute it started to the end. In fact, that was the first time that the networks pooled their coverage together. It was such a big project. Wow. And, you know, that's where you saw TV news take it to the high level. And Pete. after that, it continued to grow much better. I hate to say it. Speaking of growing much better and the excitement for folks as you kicked off your first column, folks are going to have to either pick up a copy or go online to MyrtleBeachHerald.com to see On Air with Pete Sealer. It's very exciting to see a 50-year full circle. We're thrilled to have you on the Herald Thank staff. Thanks Thank so you. much for being with us this morning, Pete, and thanks Thank for you. everything you've done. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People with columnist Pete Sealer coming up next. Think about that excitement for a teenager there in Miles City, Montana, 50 plus years ago. His first job at the station cleaning that 16 millimeter film, threading the film, and the excitement of being a cameraman there for sporting events and local parades and happenings there in that town of 10,000. Fast forward 50 years and now he's out helping small and medium and large businesses grow their business. He's still in it, hands-on, getting his hands dirty, willing to do anything to help those businesses grow. And at the same time, now he's sharing that 50 years of amazing knowledge with readers of the Myrtle Beach Herald. Catch him, pick up a, a, a copy of the paper. The inaugural cop, uh, issue kicked off last Thursday. It's going to be around from here going forward, or you can go online at MyrtleBeachHerald.com or send him an email if you've got an idea of something that needs to be covered at Pete at ReadTheHerald.com.